Good evening, everybody. Uh, great day, great day, great Monday. Tonight we have a very special guest during this beautiful Women's Month. We had a beautiful person here, beautiful personality. She's coming to bring all her energy, expertise, tell us what she's doing, what she got going on, and all that good stuff, Miss Takia Diamond. What's going on, young lady? Hey, hey, hey. Hey, what's up, what's up, what's up? First thing we got to do is lift up the vibration on this interview because, you know, I know Quentin Q be like laid back, but TK is lit. I'm turned up all the time. <laughs> so tonight might be a little more live and popping because Q be on the Q and T is on the K. So listen, we're going to check it tonight. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much for having me here tonight. Uh, shoot, I had a question for you. What inspired you to bring me on your show tonight? <laughs> oh, it's, 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 women's, it's Women's Month. And yes. um, one of the interesting things during Women's Month is you, we try to take out the, the month and highlight women. But, you know, the 31 days in March is not enough. And right. sometimes our schedules don't uh, coincide. And I wanted to bring you on because I've been seeing you. I know you've been doing your thing for a while and really like... Yes, being an influencer isn't always easy, but it's about being consistent. And you, you've been consistent since day one, since I've been following you on social media. And I was like, you know, she always got all this energy, all this passion for <laughs> what she does. And I wanted to bring you on just just so you can explain everything. Who 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 are you? Where you from? What you, you know? And then we'll get into what you do. All right. Well, first of all, when we say, who, who am I? I am another you. I am, you know, a powerful force that is here literally as a change agent to help people transform three things, which is their brains, their businesses, and their bank accounts. And, you know, <laughs> if those are three things that you are interested in doing, then I'm definitely somebody that you want to follow. So for me, what I do is... Um, I know we were talking about who I am, where I'm from, New Jersey. Let's talk about I'm originally from New Jersey, I'm a Jersey girl, <laughs> Brick City. <laughs> shout out to the, to the Bricks, shout out to Jersey, period. Thank you guys so much for all the love. Um, but I am a resident of the ATL now for the past couple of years, and I love the peace. <laughs> mm, mm. I love the peace. Yeah, that yeah. Here every everybody yeah. <laughs> everybody opposed opposed to where we sometimes in the inner city we we on top of each other it's too crowded even though you like I like we discussed earlier oh, you miss God. you miss it because it's home but when you're there you like oh I gotta go I gotta get up out of here. I, I'm, I, I, you know, I have no real push to go back. <laughs> That's right. You know, I, I I miss it because like you said, it's home. You know, my son is there, and I, my fan, my mom is there, my dad is there, and all of my fans are there for a lot of a lot of a lot of part. <laughs> but it's like you know, New Jersey. I, I love it. It's cool, but I don't have no peace in New Jersey. And New Jersey people don't respect your boundaries. They tend to just think that it's all right to invade your space. So the best thing I could do is create my own space in a whole nother neck of the woods. That they probably wouldn't want to come to. <laughs> so, so a lot of times, Takia, when a person yes. hears, "Oh, someone is a financial coach, financial guru," I think in our communities, it's, it's a lot of apprehension. I think it might go back to back in the day. Remember the insurance man used to come around the hood, <laughs> get everybody buy money, and then nobody see him for another thirty days. So, I think that a lot of times, like I, I really do, I, I think that a lot of black people. Um, culturally, we're very apprehensive when we hear financial coach, um, financial guru. Explain, yes, before you even get into the fine, first explain it the two, the two businesses that you have, two of the businesses that you have. Okay, so I have a couple, a couple different businesses. Well, we'll start with minds up transformation company and minds up transformation company is literally a coaching firm that helps entrepreneurs 
to build their confidence so that they can increase their income. So for me, I'm not more so uh, like a financial guru. I'm more of a money mindset coach. And what I do is I literally teach you how to shift the way that you think because a lot of the problems that you think that you have, you don't really have. So for instance, people would say, man, I got money problems, man, I got money problems. But the truth is, it's not really money problems that you have. It's money that you have. It's money patterns that you have. It's money beliefs that you have. And it's also the lack of knowledge and the lack of understanding of the power that you have to possess the information, to possess the connections, to possess something so much greater than just looking at your bank account, say six and seven and eight figures, but knowing that what it takes to be able to do that, who you become as you decide that, I'm changing who I am because I'm choosing a better financial future. So knowing that if I change my mindset, that's going to help me change my actions. And when I change my actions, that's going to help me have better results when it comes to making decisions in my finances. You know, mm, mm. although I can teach you a lot about saving budgeting and things like that, but that's not really my thing. It's like, I'll, I'll tell it to my my clients, like if I see like they're falling off in some way or whatever, or they got some bad habits going on. But for the most part, I'm really interested in closing the gap between where you are financially and where you want to be. I want to help you to meet and exceed those income goals that you have. So if you are still at $5,000 a month, but you're trying to get to $10,000 a month, what are the beliefs in between there that's keeping you from hitting $10,000 a month or more in your business? So so let me ask you, what what gravitated you towards that towards wanting to uh, money mindset in- i think that it was more so of a gift that was given to me more than anything um i don't even know where it came from it was just more like this profound wisdom like as you know or you guys may not know for those of you who are watching me for the first time i actually all right i give you guys a little a little of my back history. So I started out in the music industry. That's where I literally got my first taste of fame and fortune. Being in the music industry, I learned a whole lot of things wasn't what it was cracked up to be, but I learned all of this back in like 2011. Um, No, no, it could have been even before that, maybe like 2007, 2008, somewhere in that nature. I started to learn, well, I started to see things. I'm not gonna say I started to learn, I started to see things. And a lot of the things that I started to didn't resonate with my spirit. So I wanna say like around maybe 2010, 2011, um, I, I, something came over me and I just kind of began to wake up. I walked away from the music industry. I walked mm. away from the contracts. I walked away from all of that. And I just was like, I didn't want to have nothing to do with music at the time. I didn't want to sing a note. I didn't want to write a hook. I didn't want, I didn't want to have anything to do with it because I understood that the music industry was something so evil. And I'm not going to say just music, entertainment, media, period. It, it was a lot of mind control, a lot of mind control. And so I just didn't want to be a part of it. So i never forget uh, at the time, I've always been a business owner since, let me see, I got out of nursing school around maybe 24, 20, maybe like 22, 23, somewhere in that nature. And I did, I did nursing for like maybe a year. And then I was like, oh, this is not for me. <laughs> right. And so I went to actually work in human resources for a big company called uh, Allegheny Technologies with Xerox doing human resources and helping, still helping people in the medical field though. And so what I think what kind of gave me the the punch, so to speak, was I started out doing um, health and welfare benefits and then got into pensions and then they put me into 401ks. So it was like, it wasn't something that I was looking to do. I came in as just one thing and the next thing I know, I just became this whole other thing. (laughs) 
So uh, lo and behold, I was leaving work one day and I'm, I'm listening to the infamous uh, Kendrick Lamar. <laughs> and Kendrick, he says this verse while I'm driving home. Mind you, I'm just like, I'm, I'm starting to wake up. I'm starting to see things differently. And I hear this line and it changes everything for me in a heartbeat. He says, I used to borrow peace of mind because my thinking was way behind. That one line, by the time I got home, I had a whole nother song. So I'm going to give y'all a little bit of it. I used to borrow peace of mind because my thinking was way behind. There was nothing but illusions that brought me to this conclusion. Consumed by devolution, the media is my institution. School of the brainwashed lies and mass confusion. A lava, a lava mental slave, I'm living, but in my grave, I had to die and resurrect my life and pray for better days. See, tracks made me react. I called it a step back. I'm immersing myself with facts. I'm no longer a victim for that. See, even with 3D vision, I'll admit it, I was slipping, ignoring my intuition, resisting the fact I'm different, pretending I was blind, knowing that I didn't fit in. I separated myself to finish the mission given. Nothing but distractions mm. realizing what really happened. I was caught up by the beast, but thank God I've been released. Now I'm awakened. And that's what wow. came out. <laughs> right. And right. I don't know, from that point forward, I don't know, my life just soared to this higher frequency, to this higher level of understanding to it. Even the person that I was with at the time, he called me on the phone and I was speaking so eloquently. He was like, well, who is this? <laughs> and I said, I don't know who she is, but whoever she is, I love her. I think she's amazing. <laughs> and you know, I just, from that point, I really just surrendered to the journey. I realized that you know, it wasn't about what I wanted for me. It was what I was I was being called to be. It was like, yes, music. That was that that was your driving force to get the people to to love you and fall in love with you. Doing the bad girl movies and all of that stuff. Y'all know I did some shoot 'em up, bang bangs, and all that kind of stuff. So you know, you know, it's weird because when people know my my history and, and the type of music that I used to do. Not that it was like I was never out there like a like a disrespect nobody, but trashy. But you know, I may have had some trashy lyrics. Let's just keep it one hundred. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know. But um, I mean, it's, it, as it they like, say, it's the culture, it's right? Culture. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, you can take the girl out the hood, but you can't take the girl the hood out the girl. You know. What I mean? <laughs> so I know, I know that you 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 use a holistic approach and getting people to understand you're not broke or yes you got you got more value than you really think you got you're not you're not really living check to check you think you are right. but you're not ex, 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 if you can without giving all okay. your secrets away ex, explain like how how you literally have to hold somebody's hand and, 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 and take them on that journey of it's a build up to, to basically they're out on their own. All right. So the first thing is understanding the beliefs that are limiting your success. If you don't know what's hindering your success, then you can't change anything because you don't know what to change. So my job as a coach is to first analyze what are your thoughts and behaviors when it comes to your finances? Mm. So, for example, if I say to you, money don't grow on trees, does that sound familiar to you? That sounds familiar to you. So when you hear that and I ask you, where did you hear that from? It's most likely you heard it from your mother or your father or your grandmother. Money don't grow on trees, don't you ask me for no money. Don't ask me for nothing. I'm out here, I'm paying these bills. Da, 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 da. So, right, what happens then is now there's a trauma response that you have that's connected to asking for money, asking for what you're worth, asking for the top dollar that you deserve, it, no matter what it is that you do. Even in relationships, it's, you're afraid to ask for the love that you deserve. You're uh, afraid to ask for the things that you desire and deserve because what? You're afraid of rejection. Why? Because somewhere down the line, mom, dad, whoever rejected you and told you you weren't good enough 
or it's too hard to make money. Money don't come easy. But the thing is, money don't come to you easily. It don't come to that person easily. Why is it that we have certain on one part of it where money just flows freely and effortlessly to that? And then in that same, maybe the person could live right next door to you and they're struggling. Why is that? It's because they got two completely different upbringings. One upbringing is on a much higher frequency, which is receiving. And the other one is resistance. I'm resisting it. I don't believe I can have it. And since I don't believe I can have it and what you think about, you bring about, you're right. Whether you believe you're right or whether you believe you're wrong, you're right. <laughs> so it's Look, really about taking let a me look ask at you, Let me ask you to <laughs> and I know, And I know because you definitely are speaking on some some real stuff that I think that yes, most no of problem. us, most of us, when we're honest with who we are and what we've been through, we can identify with a lot of the um the, the trauma. Yes. Let me let me ask you how, how can I word it? When you so you don't come in basically on the financial. You basically want to get to know the client, see you know see what they're about. That get to tell you their upbringing because a lot, like you said, a lot of times that scenario that you pointed out can lead to. A, Okay, it may not affect their life financially, but it might affect their relationship life. It might right. affect their children's life because right. we, might, we, we might start telling our own children, oh, money don't grow on trees. Go out there and pick it off the tree. And then that, it's like, okay, like, what are we working it's for? Behavior. It's learned behavior. So we got to think, even when we speak words like, man, I'm broke. But are you really broke? You know, you got to think about when you got some, something that's broke can't be put to get back together. It can't, so, you know, it can't be fixed, right? But if you're broke, how do you expect to put your finances back together if you're telling your subconscious mind, I'm broke, which means my finances can't be fixed. And people are not aware of the terms that they use that are literally telling their subconscious mind don't give me anything leave me in lack and limitation leave me in scarcity why because that's where your brain is at your mind is wired to scarcity the moment that you decided to take a leap of faith in another direction something comes in and says, oh you think that you can do that who's gonna listen to you who's gonna buy from you Who's going to, you know, and this is literally a deeper part of yourself called that ego that's literally trying to stop you in your tracks from making that move. But here's the secret. Here's the kicker, guys. It's trying to stop you because you have programmed it to do so. Your beliefs, your habits, your behaviors, your thoughts, all of these patterns has taught ego and taught your brain that when you want to do something different, it's got to bring you back. It's got to bring you back to that, to that temperature. I'll give you an example. Let's say, for instance, we, we're in a room, right? It's just me and you. The, the temperature is set to 75 degrees. That's the default temperature. Now we invite some friends over, you know, and us color people, we draw heat. So, you know, what happens? <laughs> we get in this room and all of a sudden, the temperature on the thermometer goes up to about 90 degrees, right? Now, it's the, the it's the thermostat's job to bring the temperature back down to 75 because it knows that this is my normal, this is the normal default temperature that I'm supposed to be on. So what happens if it's sent you, if it's sent you heating your air, the AC is going to kick on to bring the temperature back down to normal. So this is the same thing when it comes to your finances. So for instance, that your normal is 5,000. When you try to want to make 10,000, yes, you get to 7,000. Now your brain starts freaking out. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This is not normal. Hold on. We're used to making five five thousand dollars or less. You you can't you can't do this. You can't think differently. I, no no. So it'll bring certain situations into your life experience, literally, 
to make it so you do not hit that ten thousand dollars for the month. And this and and, Why? and for the for those in the, the chat for those in the chat that may watch the broadcast, this is why Takia uses a, a holistic approach with it because yes, even from the conversation, most of us don't think big. Right, we think we think at a parameter, our comfort zone, right? And then, yes. like you said, once we get to oh oh, I got five thousand. No, I got eight thousand. I gotta do something with that other three. I don't feel right. I don't feel normal to the settings yes. that I put settings on myself. Instead of saying, yes. "Okay, my limitations is my limitations is basically sky the limit." I shouldn't be. Yes. I should. I should be limitless on on things right. that I'm trying to accomplish. Instead, I'll say, "Oh, I want to do this. I want to do that. I just want to be the be the." Uh, manager of my job and when Why? that's all you start with that's i'm gonna tell you something i've heard a lot of different people explain it but you explain it very simplistic yes <laughs> because i, I, I that's kind of why most people gravitate to towards me and they buy my books you know and they hire me to, to coach with me and things like that because power, power of the profit yeah the power to profit how the problem that is on Amazon, right? Yes, it's on Amazon, it's in Barnes and Nobles, and all of that wonderful stuff. Is, that's your that's your first you wrote five books, right? Um, I'm actually at 10. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> 10? I won an award for five, I haven't submitted anything else since, so. wow. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I also, which is another thing I wanted to mention to people that I do besides money mindset coaching is help you become a first time author. You know, if you, but I only work with you if you have a story to tell that is going to lead to somebody's transformation, which means mm. that I don't help you with your book to just pull your, pull your head out. Oh, I'm a victim. No, it's, <laughs> it's your ain't, writing. Ain't gonna, ain't gonna be no, ain't gonna be no trauma bonding going on, huh? <laughs> no, no, right. coming with that energy you gotta come you gotta bring me some energy when you come wow. right say so listen now well i understand your heart got broke and that's another thing too guys nobody don't break your heart they break your expectations that's a whole nother thing you feel what i mean so yeah now i can talk about a, whole lot of a lot of topics but we talking money say, tonight. Say that again. <laughs> <laughs> I like this. No, they no, don't no. break your heart. People don't break your heart. They break your expectations. That part. All I'm gonna say for anybody that uh been there had their heart <laughs> quote unquote broken, that definitely gives us a different perspective because like you said, we put expectations on human beings. Yes. Our expectation on them and, and knowing that they may have flaws or whatever, and we expected more from a human being that they, they might be able to offer. Wow. That's right. Wow. That's right. Wow. I, 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 a, a, a Q, you got to look at this. It's the same thing when it comes to your money because the relationship that you have with money is determining whether you have a lot of it or not enough so if your expectation is i'm gonna be broke every time i get money the faster it comes in the faster it goes out these are the these are the things you're telling your subconscious mind so literally your subconscious has the expectation that fast as the money come in is gonna find a reason for it to go back out. So if your relationship with money is not good, what are you saying to yourself when it comes to your finances? That that you never have enough? Or are you seeing the opposite to where you know there's always a way to make more? You know, are you are you planting the seed in yourself? Are you asking the right questions? A lot of times you're asking the wrong questions. Why is this happening to me? Why is money not coming into my life? And when you ask questions like that, your brain goes out and seeks the answer to that. So instead of asking, why is this not working for me? You should be asking like, how can this work for me? How can I 
allow more money into my life because guess what happens the same thing your brain will go and seek out the answer to come back to you to solve that problem see a lot of times when we try to do things too much with what we think that we know instead of understanding that we have something an infinite intelligence within us that's so much more powerful than who we are you know why they say everything that you need is inside of you in order for you to manifest what you want because it is it's literally three things at play here your brain what you think your heart what you feel in your heart you're dealing with your emotions and your energy your frequency what what energy are you vibrating if you're around people who are always down and out and never have enough it's just a matter of time before you be right in the same boat with them. You could have been doing good. Yeah. All of a sudden, right you start, that. Then you start picking up their habits. You start going, when you go out with them, now you're spending money that you actually used to save. But now you're like, oh, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to just have one drink. And then one drink links to three. And you don't spend almost $100 on something that you could have went and bought a six pack for for like $12. <laughs> so you have to look at, your habits you also have to look at the people that you're surrounded by and the habits of them because their, their habits are slowly but surely going to become yours and this is one of the reasons why a lot of times when people become celebrities they cut their family members off it's because the celebrity world is literally a whole nother world it's a whole nother world that i can't even explain it even the one that you, the world y'all see on tv is just not even the other world like it's just a whole nother world going on over there you know and then and then here we have our world but when we think about the celebrities what happens is in order for them to keep their caliber and not fall off they're actually being mentally trained to why do you think there's so many songs about money 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 because this is the focus this is the this is the thing is to make you guys well to make humanity make the collective feel like i want that i gotta have that so let me fight for that because that's what's gonna give me meaning in my life that's not giving you no meaning in your life mm -hmm. money itself does not give you power it's what you do with the money that gives it power if i have a thousand dollars in front of me right now this thousand dollars literally has no power until I take the thousand dollars and I go do something with it. When Access. I invest, when I trade it, when I barter, like it has no value in the middle of the street doing nothing. It's worthless until I give yeah. it power. Thing which yeah. your thought, way that you think, the thoughts are gonna come. You're gonna have thoughts that sometimes are imposed on you by other people, but when the thoughts come man are you claiming ownership to it you realize that thought has no power until you pick it up and adopt it as your own just like the dollar bill has no value until you pick it up and take it to the store and use it it's just a piece of paper it otherwise it's just a thought so what are the thoughts that you're having in regards to the thoughts that you are having go deeper it's it's it, 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 it's definitely it Life goes change, into the right? <laughs> yeah, it goes, it goes into the mindset and, and and you're right it's like a person may come to you and see what you do and say well, I'm gonna go to her and she could help me think of a financial mindset but it's really um because it's a holistic approach it's really a life-changing mindset because it most is. of us think most of us it's that so grew up in the hood as they say uh yes, glass half yes. empty it's half yes. empty i don't got this i don't like you said it's always you know either half what empty you or can't half do full. it's right yeah. it's either the glass is either half empty or half full but it's based on your perception it's based on your perspective so if i see in my mind that it's always a struggle in order for me to get money but guess what on the other side Maybe you might think that it's a struggle, but if in my mind, I know that I can have money with ease, I'm going to choose ease. So then I ask myself, what is it going to take for me to allow money to show up in my life with ease? But the, the, the average person is going to be in defense.
Like, you know, I, I have a, I have a, I have a, con, I have a confession to give. Uh, you're gonna laugh when I tell you this, right? I'm not. I'm gonna, not. No, one, I'm not. I'm not gonna laugh at you. I promise I'm not, you, I'm on it. <laughs> I'm not one of those people. I'm not one of those people who believe in fads a lot. So when everybody nowadays is saying generational curses, right? Yes. I don't. I I particularly don't like to don't say I believe lie. in that, right? But the the perspective that you're giving me makes me look at the generational curse thing a little different because yes. A lot of times when you have high functioning people, everybody's high functioning around them. And when you have people who are low low vibrational, everybody's low vibrational. It's like, you know, how was work? It was a height and went to nine to five and this, that, and third. And then then when you see people that's the go-getters, everything's a hustle. Everything's, yo, they move in. They they don't got time to sleep. They don't got time to worry about oh a bill came okay i'm gonna pay it don't worry about it I just, some right. people see some people see one bill and they know they got the money they just be like <sighs> nah exactly exactly and that's literally check this out let's go a little bit deeper right so when people have that thought it literally triggers an emotion in the body when that emotion gets set off then it creates a chemical reaction in the body right so when you have good thoughts and exciting thoughts you got the dopamine you got the you know when you're in fear you got the adrenaline and so all the all of these different things this is why i i really specialize in, in emotional mastery guys because once you understand the damage that your emotions do to the outcome of your life, you're going to see how important it is for you to actually manage the emotions that you feel. So it's more so to be the observer of what has been my experience when it comes to my finances, right? So if I'm if I'm able to look at what my experiences have been, do I have the ability to gain a new skill in order to learn more about how to manage my money better? You do. Do I have the ability to um, take a, a course on budgeting and things of that nature to make sure that I have a better financial consciousness when it comes to my money? I can. But what happens is most people, they don't. They don't. Why is that? Because it takes it back to that whole, if we talk about the generation curse really about it being no black magic with a spoon thing or whatever being a curse this is literally mental programming that has been passed down to you that is the curse this, yeah. this ain't a potion it's, it's, this it's, is it's about a behavior and a lifestyle that has been passed down to you for generations before your mother before your mother's mother before your mother's mother mother all these stuff all of these things were dumped on Forgive me, but mostly black people because one truth, thing that, they really didn't yeah. want us to know the power that we possess. They didn't want us to know that. And so because they did not want us to know, they had to reprogram us to make us think that we were at the bottom of the totem pole only to find out that your melanin is priceless. Yeah. It's one thing it's one thing to know your history. It's another thing to 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 try to learn from it. But like, okay, you know it. Yes. It happened. It happened. But now, now you're you're allowing the trauma to continue by right. keep a, by keep being in that trauma state instead yes. of saying, yeah, this happened. Oh, yeah, that happened. I ain't forget it happened. But we talking about what I'm doing to to combat that and what I'm doing to right. not and allow. And, and we always talk about it as, as as parents. You want you want your kids to live better than you was raised. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. I'm going to share with y'all something from my, something from my book. You guys go get a copy of this book, for real. All right. So in this book, I mean, this chapter is called Growth Mindset Versus Your Fixed Mindset. Right? So somebody with a growth mindset, no, let's say with a fixed mindset, if your mindset is fixed, you avoid challenges. 
if your mindset is growth, then you embrace challenges. If your mindset is fixed, then you give up easily. But if your mindset is set to growth, then you keep going when things get difficult. If your mindset is fixed, you see effort as a waste of time. You ignore criticism. You feel threatened by the success of others. But when you have a growth mindset, you see effort as, you know, effort as the path to mastery. You learn from criticism. You learn from and you find inspiration from the success of others, right? So just taking a look at the, the habits and the behaviors of just those little things. There's so much more that I could give y'all on that, but we don't have a lot of time for me to get y'all in the whole rest. But I just wanted to share, right? Just buy, that, buy her book, Amazon, Barnes & Noble. You know, it, uh, she's a 10-time a ten ten author and counting. She also helps people with writing their first book, as long as your book is helping someone and passing on the information where somebody could benefit. The power of the prophet. Yes. And see, you know, with people, when they hear the title, they say, is it the power of the prophet, like as in prophesying? But my thing is like, no, I may be prophesying to you <laughs> in this book. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think... I think those those two words, even though they're spelled a lot, they can be used simultaneously. And if you yes. really understand, and if, if just by talking to you and, and knowing the title of the book, you basically would profit from being able to master your mindset. And I think exactly. that that's one of the things that, even from watching you for the last three four years, in in a lot of the stuff that you do on Facebook. We're we're getting people to understand you you're limitless, right? You don't put yourself. It, it, it's bad enough of situations that put us in boxes, but you're putting yourself in a box. Self sabotage, imposter syndrome, and if we talk about imposter syndrome, that's the version of you that. No, you could do it, but for some reason, you're just looking for a reason to not be good enough. Or you feel like I'm a fraud because, you know, I I don't I don't really have it all together, but you could very well have it mo mostly together. But in your mind, because you got this whole perfectionism thing going on, you know, it's killing you. It's killing your money. It's killing your your happiness. This is the main thing that I ask anybody. What is it costing you to continue to keep thinking the same thoughts that you've been thinking all of these years? Ooh. 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 Let's go deeper, right? What is it costing you? I can tell you the number one thing that it's costing you. It's costing you your peace. Because you can't sleep at night when you're thinking about how you're going to get your next dollar, where, what you're going to eat, how you're going to get the kids some milk, diapers, whatever the case might be. So the first thing it's costing you is your peace. The next thing that not changing your mind, money mindset is costing you is it's costing you your relationships. Why? Because sometimes in your marriage, your thoughts about money is the complete opposite of your mate's thoughts about money and because you never really sat down to have a conversation and build a foundation around what your financial <laughs> outlook is as a family is why it's, it looked the way that it looked which is not good both of you are struggling while both of you struggling somebody has to be the one to step up and have the mentality to say well you know what babe let's invest in this because this is gonna make us more money too often we are spending money that don't make you money back and that's the bad that's the worst habit to have right how often yeah, yeah. do you go and you're just buying things just because you got the money but then when you really need the money and your phone is shut off, you think back to all them 50 things you bought at the Dollar Tree that you could use to pay your phone bill. So these are behaviors and, and habits and traits and trends and things like this that you can literally watch out for and be observant of and just be mindful and watch yourself. 
that one of the things you could do is when you go to the store and you get ready to get ready to spend your money, I want you to you spend your put the dollar up or whatever, and go to the thought in you in your mind that you have when you're about to give that lady or that man that your mm. twenty dollar bill or whatever it is. What is your thought? Is it you give it to them and you like, damn, I don't really want to spend this thing. I was trying to hold that. Trying to hold that twenty, but let me go ahead and get this. Or is your mindset like, there you go? Why? Because there's more where that came from. Why am I going to be stuck in my mind about not having enough, and I gotta be this Debbie Downer when I can literally have a shift in my mindset and remember what I'm worth and understand that I am the creator of my reality. And if I change my frequency and I change my point of focus, then I actually disable any resistance from money being able to be attracted to me. So I'm creating the roadblock. I'm the one who's self-sabotaging. I'm the one back to being the imposter, pretending to be something that I'm not. I'm the one. I'm the one who's saying, I don't deserve this because maybe you made some mistakes with money in the past. Okay, you made a mistake. So you hold yourself hostage over a financial mistake you made. But guess what? You can take that mistake and turn it into a purpose. And that purpose is I learned from that because I made that mistake, it grew me. Now I know what not to do rather than beating yourself up. Like, man, that was just so dumb, man. I bet it a hundred thousand dollars on this racetrack, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> you know, y'all men read things, <laughs> whatever you know, gave with your money or invested in something bad. Right. And then when it all falls down, I tell you one thing, which people they play, they play the game to win poor people they play to not lose you see the difference the the rich person knows that they're going to take a risk i might i might multiply this i might lose this but either way i'm down to play i'm down to play i'm down to take the risk because you know what i can't see what's possible if i don't play now the poor person is, is scared to play it's like and I don't know, because if I do this now, I'm not going to be able to do this. I'm not going to be able to do that, they, right? They, they, they're hedging their bets. They're hedging huh? their bets. They're hedging their bets. Right. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. So. <laughs> it's like, well, I've been there. <laughs> right. I've been there. And so guess what? It happens. Everybody makes some bad decisions. But now, next time. No, I'm not gonna never tell nobody don't gamble, don't don't enjoy what you do, what you enjoy doing. But I'm gonna tell you, be mindful of what you're doing, be mindful of how much you're doing it, and be mindful if you're overdoing it, because now you're gonna create a problem where we need to be calling the gambling hotline, because now you've turned it up. Yeah, you, 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 what is it? They gotta confiscate your house for collateral. <laughs> y'all, y'all, it's just too much. Now you, okay. now you're taking too many uh chances. <laughs> <laughs> Put some Definitely. chips on the table or the summer car. Man, I'd rather take that hundred thousand dollars and invest it, knowing that that hundred thousand dollars, so I'll put it in some real estate, knowing it's gonna make me five hundred thousand. Knowing that you feel what I'm saying, so it's really a lot of people just lack knowledge. Uh, I'm not even gonna say that they not knowledge of the different ways that you can actually make money or or have money with ease. For instance, let me say this, right? So this is one of the ways that you get to have money with ease, right? You have to choose easy, right? So here's the thing. Working the nine to five. Oh, I got to put in this hard work. I got to let this paycheck to paycheck. Da, 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 da. But if you get into real estate, you can sell one property and you can make $11,000 in one property. Just by showing somebody the property, them falling in love with it, and them making their deposits, and now you're $11,000 richer. That's money made easy. That's that's allowing money to come to you with ease, right? You seek out ways that money can come to you with ease, but you ask your brain, what are the ways that money could come to me easily and frequently? 
without no harm to anyone. But because we do not know how to speak life into our life or speak life into our finances, we end up getting a life that somebody else handed us. And that's why I come to snatch you. Let's go. <laughs> so, but the key, how, does, how, does, how, does, how does somebody join your program? Okay. So you can go to my website. I always recommend that it's shoot me an inbox message or something on, on Facebook as well. But you can go to my website and you can literally book a session. Um, TakiyaDiamond.com. T-A-K-I-Y-A-H. Diamond like the ring. TakiyaDiamond.com. When you get to the site, you'll see a link that says coach with me. So when you click on that link, it's going to take you to my calendar. Find a spot. <laughs> And pencil it in, book it. And once you once you book the session, it's gonna give you a few questions to help me to know where you currently are. You know, so whether it's you wanting to write a book or whether it's you literally needing a coaching to increase your income in your business because your mindset is just all jacked up, then I want you to tell me that. I want you to say, like, listen, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> you know, so my first question is going to be, how much money are you making in your business and how much do you want to make in your business? And then I'm going to ask you the question, why do you believe you're not making it? Mm. Because it's whatever happens after the word because that's the underlying story that's keeping you from it. Great. Great. Folks. You see this? this? <laughs> I, 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 I knew this. I knew this show or this interview or this chat would be the way that it is. And this is who she <laughs> is. She always has all this great energy and always got this great, great information and you know really yes. um i appreciate that she allowed herself to come on and i definitely benefited from having this conversation and really thinking about your mindset and yes pessimistic optimistic it, it always it always yeah. i always be in a, Pota a potato potato right yeah exactly <laughs> Exactly. You know, in this book, guys, I actually give you, I believe, it's eight passive ways to make an make an additional income. Because you know, some people maybe maybe in your mind you really believe there's no other way to make money besides a nine to five. All right, but in this book, I actually break break this whole thing down for you that you know we have four bars when it comes to well four boxes when it comes to our finances right so we have the employed then we have that's where you trade your time for money we got the self-employed where you work for yourself but you know you can do what you want to do as far as your time but then we got passive your passive money is actually having money working for you right that's your big business that's where people uh they say like people people are um where other people are working hard, you're making the money easy. You get what I mean? Uh, or it's that one thing that you made, for example, I'm also a course creator. I have a course out called Fearless Cash Confidence. So if you're literally wanting to literally get past all of the fears when it comes to your financial confidence, you can take the course and it will help you overcome whatever those things are right and so the the last one would be an investor so the four pillars but you want to ask yourself which one are you right are you the investor are you the one that has money working for you are you the one that's trading time for money or are you the one that's still working for yourself which you still trading time for money you're just more involved inside your business right so in order to allow money to come to you with ease you have to allow yourself to be in uh involved in the things that let money come to you easily there's real estate things that you can do right now that won't even cost you anything out of pocket to where you actually gotta go take out a loan and buy a five hundred thousand dollar house there's so many different things that you can do there's other things when it comes to um you know, not just real estate, investing, right? Well, we know investing can be a, 
a little wishy-washy depending on what you're investing in in the stocks. But listen, make sure that you get invested in a compound fund to where you're not taking a loss, but money is always growing and it's growing effortlessly based on what other people are doing in the fund. You see what I mean? So it's like, if you don't have this wisdom, then money coming to you easily is not going to be um, in your radar because you're not asking yourself, how can I make me easily? Your mentality is by default. How do I make money? And I know I got to work hard for it, which is the belief that's hindering you. It, it doesn't have to be hard. And even if you work in a nine to five, there's nothing wrong with working a nine to five, especially if you love what you do when you work in your nine to five. But the thing is, is that if you're there from nine to five and your energy is like, oh, I don't want to be here. Are you going to be motivated to even do your own thing when you get off of work? Mm. You know what I mean? So it's like, why are you at your nine to five? You should be thinking about what is that thing that actually really, really drives you? What's that thing that that really makes you makes your heart sing? That really makes you feel like you're giving value. Like for instance, your podcast, it's giving value. So now you ask yourself, how? What is the best way for me to actually monetize from my podcast? And you see in your mind people willingly and 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 um, what's the word I'm looking for? People like they they willingly. Um, want to advertise on your on your on your network, right? So they're yeah. they grateful to give you their credit card number to pay the invoice to get you know do whatever it takes to have it aired on your thing. But the thing is, in order for you to have that, you got to see that you have to in your mind begin to see. You know what? My podcast is reaching uh, volumes of people. I offer a lot of value, and I know that people have businesses and things that they do that they want to be heard and they want to be seen the benefit is it's not about charging them it's more so about the exchange that in exchange for my viewers you are providing me with financial compensation for what i have to offer you to put you in front of, in front of my audience you exactly. understand Mm -hmm. Once you break that limitation off your mind of, well, I can't do this because people are not going to want to pay for it. That's one of the biggest beliefs that really block you because as an entrepreneur, you think that somebody's not going to pay you for something, but that's really your limiting belief. That's really your thing of you believing that somebody's not going to pay you this. S several people out there who would gladly be like, oh, okay. But it's not until you got that confidence that, you know what, listen, guys, on my, my, my podcast, I have about uh, 10,000 viewers on YouTube, whatever the story might be, or whatever. And, and listen, my, my site gets a lot of traffic. Don't you want to expose your business to more people? If that sounds like something that you're interested in, then get a time slot with us so that we can advertise your products, your albums, your courses, your da 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 Send us an email for pricing. Boom. You get what I mean? What you got to say? So, you. you get what I mean? Listen, see, exactly. that, that's what I meant as the coach to say, okay, this is what you're doing, but how do we monetize that? So, there's one thing to say that this is what we do, but how am I making a living off of my purpose? How am I making a living off of my, my, my passion, off of my calling? Right. Because at the end of the day, you know, you can have a passion to do something. But is that what you're called to do? Is that really your purpose? If it's your purpose and it's what you're called to do, it has to make you money. But if you do not have the belief, as the word says, your gift makes room for you. But if you don't have the belief that room can be made for you, then it's going to come to somebody like me who will be glad. That's right. Listen, guys, <laughs> check it out. To Kia Diamond. Yes. Uh, I'm speechless. Make sure you guys check out her book. One of her books, The Power of the Prophet, which is on Amazon, as well as Barnes and Noble. And um find her on Facebook. And she also has a website. She's she's always available and accessible to any and everybody, no matter yes. who they are. And Takia, appreciate you coming on tonight. Thank you so much for having me, my dear. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you having me here. <laughs> and let's do it again. We got more to talk about. Let's let's pull up the weeds and plant new seeds for a transformed life. Absolutely. 
everyone have a blessed night. Take care.